Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. This video continues directly on from where the last video stopped, in which we were setting up a SQL database container to sit beside our existing WordPress container. In this video we're going to address two outstanding issues which we had brought up in the previous video but yet to correct. The first one is that the two containers that we are going to create using our Docker Compose file currently with the existing configuration are unable to talk to each other. So we'll be setting up a Docker network so that the containers can communicate. The second issue is that the Docker data isn't persistent. Therefore we are going to set up a Docker volume so that when we, can, when we close down the containers and bring them up again, the database data is persistent. This is important if we're developing a website. We don't want to have to we don't want to lose our data when we shut down our containers. So let's get to our desktop. Let's get these two things done. And then let's demonstrate that we can get a website running. OK, so here we are on the desktop. On the left hand side, we have a shell already logged into my Pi in the website directory above my home directory. And on the right side, I have Visual Studio Code using a SSH uh, tunnel to connect directly to my Raspberry Pi. So as with the previous video, the code and files located within Visual Studio Code are located on the Pi, and I'm editing them directly. So let's first deal with the issue of communication. To allow these two containers to talk to each other, we need to create a network. We do this at the bottom of our Docker Compose file by declaring a new network as follows. We type in networks, colon, then we create a new network. I'll be calling it website network in this case. And then we give it a name. For the sake of consistency and to avoid confusion, I tend to keep the name the same as that which the network is called when you define it. So these two things are different. One of them defines the name of the network from the point of view of the containers, and one of them defines the name of the network from the point of view of the Docker Compose file. But I do like to keep them the same. OK, so that has defined a network for us, which means we can now use this name in our WordPress and our database containers to relate the two together. So let's get that done. We'll start with the database container. So we'll move down into the database container. And we'll do a similar thing. We'll type in networks, colon. And then we'll use website network. And then we'll give it an alias. The reason we'll be giving it an alias will become clear later on in the course. And we'll call it WordPress. So for now, take this as red that we're going to add an alias and just add it in and we'll deal with this later on. But the point, the important point, is that the network we've defined at the bottom and called it website underscore network is being assigned to the database container. Now we can simply copy this chunk of code we've just written and paste it into our WordPress container. A small correction here for the indentation. There we go. So that solved the network issue. These two containers can now talk to each other. Let's move on and solve the issue of persistence of data. We do this in a similar way. We define a volume at the bottom of the Docker Compose file using the volumes key. And I'll be calling our volume db underscore data. We then have to define the driver and by default it, I think the default is local, but we'll be defining it just in case. And then we give it a name. As with the networks, I like the name to be the same as that which we use to define the volume in the first place. In my case, DB data. With this done, we're able to use this data volume in our WordPress container, or sorry, in our case, the database container. We don't need to use it in the WordPress container, we need to use it in the database container because that's where we're going to be persisting our data. So we do that by adding a volumes key here. And we simply say 
the volume we've defined below, DB data, and we map it to a folder within the container. If you were to read the documentation on the SQL image, you would know that you want to map to the following directory var lib mysql. So I'm going to save that. So at this point, we have a volume that will store the data located here within the container somewhere on our computer and it will name that reference to that somewhere as db underscore data. We don't care about where it's saved. Docker will actually save it somewhere where we probably won't be able to find it. We don't need to know where it is. If we need to get access to the data outside of Docker, we can do, but that's not really the point of this. The point of this is to make this data persistent. So Docker will now reference it to db underscore data. And next time we start the container, it will use this again because it will find it already in existence. So the next thing to do is something that we didn't do in the last video. And that is that we need to define some WordPress environment variables in the WordPress container. We don't have to do this. It's not absolutely necessary. However, by doing so, when we create our website using the WordPress user interface in the browser, we won't have to enter the details of the database. It will already find them from these environment variables. So type in WordPress underscore DB underscore host colon. And we're going to use DB colon 3306. Now, this is where you can see the container name for the database has come into play. There it is, the DB. And here it is again, down here. And we're referencing it to port 3306, which is the port that we're using here. OK, so that's telling WordPress what the host is for the database. It is the database container DB running on port 3306. Now we need to add some more. WordPress DB user. Oops, learn to type. And that will be WordPress as defined further above. And then WordPress DB password. And this will be in our case a very complicated password. And then finally WordPress DB name. And as above it's WordPress. So as you can see it's very important that these match what's up here. And that we reference the container and the port correctly here. So that's it. We should ha now have everything we need in this Docker Compose file. We have two services, DB and WordPress, and by using Docker Compose up, they will both be launched and run. They can communicate to each other via the network and the data from the database should be persistent. So let's check this theory. Let's go over to our terminal on the left and let's run it using Docker Compose up minus D. Okay, so both containers have now been launched. Let's confirm they're running with docker container ls. There we go, they're both running. So the true ACID test that these configuration settings for the environment variables are correct and that the network is working so that these two elements, these two containers can talk to each other is to attempt to set up the website. So if we open a browser window and navigate to our public IP address, which I've just done off the screen here, you'll be presented with the language selection screen for WordPress. Now we have seen this before when we were showing the connection through the firewall in the first place. I'm going to select English UK for my language and click continue. Now what we were presented with previously was a dialog box asking us for the SQL database connection details. In this case, we're not receiving that message. This is because we provided the connection details in the environment variables in our compose file. And these have clearly been picked up by the WordPress container and been used. So now we can just fill in these boxes 
with a with some fake information just as a demonstration and then we can install WordPress and show that we can actually connect to a real website. So I'll fill this in as test, 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 and then I will use test at test.com, for example. And I will click install WordPress. test test and hopefully this will log us in and there we go this is the WordPress admin screen this is where we're going to be building our website partly later on in the course but what we can see is that our SQL database container is working in collaboration with our WordPress container and that's fantastic these two things are running on your Raspberry Pi and going through your router to the outside world so if we now have a look at the site, there we go. You are hosting, or I am in this case hosting, but I'm hoping you are now hosting a website on your Raspberry Pi using Docker containers going through your router to the outside world. This is a great milestone. There's still much to be done, unfortunately, but this is still a great milestone and you should have a good look at this and be very happy with what you've achieved. We still need to set up a domain and we still need to set up HTTPS to encrypt our website. We still need an email server because WordPress really does need uh, an email account. You can use something like Gmail, but if you want a professional website, you really do need an email server hosting your own domain's emails. And we'll be looking at that later on in the course. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. I'd very much appreciate it if you could like the video if you did like it and if you could subscribe to my video course. That way you will get updates when I produce new content. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.